Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time we're going to be talking about WinPIS. And WinPIS, let me uh, bring this over here, the official page, um, is a uh, post exploitation tool that you're going to use on your target device. In this case, we're talking about Windows devices. WinPIS is specific to Windows, and you have LinPIS that's specific to Linux. Um, and in Windows, you're going to run this tool once you have successfully gained access to that system in whichever way. You know, like I'm talking in terms of if you are a pen tester and you are doing, um, you are in the middle of an engagement and you gained access to that system in one way or another. But it could also be that you can use this tool for OS hardening that after you set up an OS, you run the tool to see if there are any vulnerabilities or any misconfigurations on the systems. So whichever way you want to use it, right? But what the tool is going to do, uh, it is going to do a scan. It's going to run a variety of scripts on your system, on the local system, and it's going to present a report to you. Pretty much it's going to be doing an enumeration type of scan because there's no exploitations here. What the system is going to show you or what the utility is going to show you is going to show you things that could be potentially misconfigured, uh, unpatched systems, or things that you have to take a look at it to make sure that you have the proper security controls and the proper configurations in place. Now, uh, this is the official repo from GitHub. And you can go here, and as you could see, you have different options. See, let me come down here. Uh, you have the options of doing either uh, a PowerScript, a batch file, or an executable on your target machines. And it's up to you to decide which way you want to do it. If you download the executable, let me get to that point. Uh, so if okay, latest releases were here. So as you could see, you have link uh, limpies and WinPix. So if you download the executable, you're gonna have a tons of issues with your browser, especially if you are downloading it from the um, target device that's running Windows, because this tool, as you can imagine, is flagged as malicious by the browsers, by the antivirus. So you have to do some work before you run this tool to make sure that either you upload it in any other way, you create some exclusions on the antivirus, you disable the antivirus, you gotta do something about it, but Windows, especially Windows 10, uh, Windows 11, is not gonna allow you just to download it and run it without you making some configurations to allow that uh, to happen. Uh, but once you do it, you'll see that you have different options. You have uh, the 86 architecture, 64 architecture, and you have another version of WinPIS that is obfuscated. But in reality, you know, it's being detected and it's being flagged by everything. Uh, but again, it's totally fine because this is post-exploitation or for you to use it on a system you have access to, right? You have to find your way into the system using other tools, right? And once you find your way into the system, then you can try to use a tool to elevate your privileges on that system. So ideally, let me bring this graphic back here for one second and let's do a, um, a, a quick, um, how do you call that? A quick annotation or, or explanation of this. So let's use this as an example, right? We have all of our uh, computers. Let me put a switch right here. All computers are connected to the switch. And in this case, as always, I'm over simplifying um, the, um, the network design. Everybody's connected to the cloud. And we have a firewall right here. And disconnect. Okay, so... So the setup is this. So when you are doing a pen test or when you want to use this tool, let's say that you are doing a pen test or you are 
trying to enforce the security posture of your organization and you have access to the different systems, right? Uh, so actually, this shouldn't be it. So it connects to, let me, uh, let me change this for one second. Where is the eraser on this thing? Oh, there's no eraser oh, right here. So what I wanted to do is just fix <laughs> that network diagram that I had, even though it's oversimplified and this is the firewall. Right, and the firewall connects to this. Anyway, so the uh, WinPiece is a post post exploitation tool. So you somehow you find your way into the system, right? Um, let me not use the example of, or let's use two examples. The first example is going to be the pen tester. The pen tester uh, has an engagement with your organization, and they found a way into, let's say, this is the pen test machine, right? and they found their way into a uh, Windows 10 computer. So if they found the way into the Windows 10 computer, whichever way they wanted to use for that, right? so they found their, w their own way to it, and they uh, gained access to this computer with low privileges, let's say that they are just a regular user on this computer once they connect to it, so once they have access to it, they got to find a way to uh, upload to this computer WinPiss and run WinPiss on this computer. And one of the uh, features of WinPiss, because it has a lot of features, is that it's going to check for, for possible privilege escalation uh, techniques. Or it's going to check, let me rephrase that, it's going to check for privilege escalation vulnerabilities and when you run the tool you're going to have a section that you can use oh my god you know what i can use this vector this attack vector or this other attack vector to elevate the privileges on this computer from regular user to admin and then from there you can move laterally uh, to the other side of the networks or anywhere you want to move to right so the challenge is number one upload right the tool here because you're not going to be able to run WinPiece from here to here like scan it it's not going to happen you have to you have to be connected to it that is example number 1 example number 2 is if you are setting up your computers let me undo all this right here and get it again so example number 2 is that you are you know, security admin engineer of your organization and you want to implement um, some type of OS hardening or you want to check that uh, system that is uh, configured in your, in your organization has, you know, it, it is secure. So you can also do that in that way. So what you will do, because you have complete access to that system, Right, let's say that is this system right here. You have complete access to it. You can just download the tool and run it. But again, something you have to keep in mind when you do this, you have to make sure that you create some exception on the uh, antivirus software, whatever antivirus software you're using. And if you're going to download it from the official website, you also have to... Um, create the exep exception on the browser so it can be downloaded because that tool is flagged as a uh, malware. So those are the two simple scenarios that you can use this tool. And let's go right into it so it's going to make more sense. So the tool itself is super simple to use. Actually, there's nothing much that you're going to do right there. Oh, let me uh, cancel this. Okay, so let me close this. So once you download the tool, something else, if you download the executable, uh, by default, you are not going to see the different colors. So let me go to the beginning right here. And notice, let me uh, make these fonts bigger. doesn't like okay 
notice the um, the the legend that is going to show you right here, right? So when you run the utility, by default, it's not going to be color coded, and I'll show you what you need to do to enable the colors. But um, what the colors means, and this is what you have to pay attention to because you're going to receive so much information that it's going to be overwhelming to look into it, right? So you have to either concentrate on the areas that are important to you or that you have some suspicious or a hint that that's the route that you would like to follow and then look into it. So red, anything that you see red means that there is an uh, indicates that there is a special privilege over an object or something is mis misconfigured. I know that you can read. I just read it right from there. It just means that there is something that you should pay attention to. Every time that you say red, it doesn't mean that all red is, 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 a, is a pathway into a successful exploitation. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that. It just means pay attention to it. Maybe there's something in there, and most of the time there is something in there. How useful is that going to be? Well, that's yet to be determined once you start working on it, right? But at least it's going to help you cast your eye and concentrate your attention to whatever is on red. Greens means good job, right? You know, it, it is properly configured. It doesn't mean that the admin properly configured. That it just, it just means that either, either the admin or Windows or the application, whatever that that's whatever was getting checked, is properly configured according to uh, WinPiece. And then we have uh, Zion indicates active users, and then we have blue disabled users and light yellow indicate links and this is what you see right here so something that you should pay attention to because the amount of information that you're going to get is so overwhelming that maybe when you see something on red you want to follow the links to learn more about it right once you read it once you see it and this is what you're going to see let me uh, come over here so if I copy this link, for instance, like you can find Windows local PE checklist right here, right? For Windows uh, Windows privilege escalation, actually I just copy that link right here. And this is what it's gonna show you, right? It's gonna tell you more information about uh, the best tool for Windows local privilege escalation vectors. So pay attention to that as you're seeing the results. And as you could see here, you know, you're going to find some, in this case, checking basic, basic system information, as you could see, checking for system information. And it's going to check the system, and it's going to say, you know what, something, this 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 is red, this version machine enabled, you know what, there may be some vulnerabilities in there that you're going to be able to look into it. So those are the things that you're going to, that you're going to pick the more you use this now. Uh, as you could see, it found some vulnerabilities. It tells me right here what it is. It's going to point me to uh, to the vulnerabilities links in there. So th that's what you have to pay attention to. So how do you run it? I mean, it's super simple, right? Like, there are, there's one way that I run this. Let me, oh, I have to change the font right here. I'm sorry about this. It's not... Let me see if I can do this. Hold on. Okay. So once you run it, you can just run the executable and boom, it's going to do its magic. Or you can output the content of the file to a text file. And that's what I was doing before. You can redirect that to anything you want to do. The problem with your redirect is that, you know, if you redirect to Notepad, for instance, to a TXT, you're not going to be able to see the colors in there. And not only that, um, it is good for reporting purposes, but I prefer looking at it on the, uh, on the console because I'm able to see the colors. So the way you run it, just type the command, hit enter, and depending on the system that you have, it's going to take a, a long time to run. As you could see, it is running different type of scripts that are going to check for different things, such as install software, system configurations, 
different type of security settings. Oh, it's going to check for services and any scheduled tasks that you have there. It's going to check for users and groups, so on and so forth. Even file permissions is going to be checking. So as you could see, it's going to check for a whole bunch of things and it's going to, the report is going to be right in front of you. So this is Wimpy's. Uh, this is one of those tools that you have to use and test and test and test and test and use and use. And once you have that information that you think that is useful to you, find more information about the information that you found because that's the only way that you're going to be able to maximize uh, Wimpy's, right? In this case, what this is going to be telling you, it's going to be telling you I found this, this, and this, and this. It's not going to be doing anything for you, right? It's not going to be creating an exploit that you're going to be able to use or anything like that, but at least it's going to provide the information for you to move to the next step or at least try to move to the next step. Now, remember, this is Wimpis and there's Limpis, the same exact concept. Remember that you need to run these tools from the device that you have access to, whichever way you have access to. Either you gained access through an exploitation or you have physical access to it and you're just running this for OS hardening, for instance, right? So I hope that this is an information that is useful to you. If you found this video useful, why don't you click on the like button, consider subscribing to my channel, and why not? Leave a nice comment. That's good karma. I hope that you have a great day and I'll talk to you on the next video.